Alton Jones here, and I want to show you today just some real basics of how to use your electronics, mainly the downward looking sonar, the traditional type of sonar that we've been used to for so many years, and just give you some of the fundamental things that will help you understand more about what you're seeing and how to interpret that, how to apply it to your fishing day. Okay, this is a traditional downward looking sonar view, and what I want you to really understand is here your transducer is mounted in the back of the boat and it is shooting one cone shaped beam that goes down in the shape of a cone directly underneath in my boat the, just, just in front of the engine on the back of the boat. Now what you're seeing drawn on the right hand screen is showing you what is directly under the boat right now. Anything that is over on this part of the screen we've already passed over so you're seeing some lag time. You know we've, we went across this five or six seconds ago but we're going across this exactly right now. Um, now let's, let's look at some, some different things real quick. First of all, you'll notice that we've got some objects here on the bottom. Uh, these appear to be attached to the bottom, so I'm going to assume it's, it's some brush piles. Uh, this is probably just a standing tree right here. And uh, down here, now see how we have some things here, right here and right here, that may not be attached to the bottom? This could be fish. This could be fish sitting over a tree, and I'm going to show you how to adjust your units to see that even better. Now, this particular unit that I'm using has a transducer. By the way, here's a lot of fish. These are definitely fish coming over a whole school of them right here, okay? See how they make not necessarily complete, perfect arches, but you can definitely tell that they're not connected to the bottom in any way, uh, and uh, it, they're positioned just like a school of fish would be. Here's some suspended a little bit further off the bottom. But when you, this transducer has the capability of running at multiple frequencies. Right now I'm running at a frequency of 200 kilohertz, which is actually very good for running across the lake at high speeds and still being able to see the bottom. But if I really want to see what's on the bottom and see those individual fish effectively, I'm going to go into my menu system and I'm going to go down here to beam select instead of 200 kilohertz, let's go down to 83 kilohertz. Now, 83 kilohertz is a much slower, much lower frequency, but it's going to give me a lot more detail when I'm looking at the bottom of the lake. And see if you can tell what I'm seeing here. I want you to see how much more definition now these fish are drawn, drawn with. That's probably a rock right on the bottom right there. That's a fish, that's a fish, that's a school of bait fish, and these are individual fish. So when you're, trying, when you're going slow and you're trying to see minute detail, for example, when you want to watch your bait directly under the boat and watch, your, watch the fish you're fishing for, you want to be on a low frequency with your transducer. So it's important to have a unit that has multiple frequencies available in that same transducer. Now there's another mode that I can go in uh, that will, that's actually called dual beam. I can use both my 200 and my 83 kilohertz simultaneously and it sort of gives me the best of both worlds. It's a very good operating mode most of the time. Here we have uh, just some brush piles, maybe some bait fish around them. That's probably a fish laying on the bottom next to a rock right there. But you can see the detail on this is outstanding. If I was fishing I would literally be able to watch my bait go straight up and down. Uh, for suspended fish it's deadly. This is the, the mode you want to be in to be able to watch your bait go down, get it right to the depth the fish are at with a drop shot or a jigging spoon, that type of thing and, and uh, you'll, you'll be amazed at being able to watch yourself catch fish. It's almost like playing a video game. Most of your units, when you buy them out of the box, they will be set in what's called automatic mode. As you get more advanced, you're going to want to disable automatic mode and run your units in manual. It's a very easy procedure. All you do is press the menu button. I'm going to go down here to my range, which is set on auto, and as I scroll to the right, it's now set manually. There's 10 and it's going to go up in one foot increments and I'm going to go up to about 35, 40 feet. I want to set it on the lowest range I can to still be able to see the bottom of the lake. Okay. Now we're going to go over some deep water right here so I'm going to set it on a little bit deeper scale. There's about a 65 foot scale but you, I want you to see I have a lot of control right now over what I'm doing with the unit. Some of the other uh, adjustments that you can make on the unit yourself are the sensitivity. All right, The sensitivity just how strong of a signal, how much gain is that transducer putting out. And you want to run that transducer, that sensitivity, as high as you can without getting any 
any distortion or feedback. Now, in this particular situation, I'm able to turn my sensitivity all the way up. And look at the clarity I'm getting. Look at all the fish that are laying down in the bottom of that particular little creek channel right there. Look at that school of fish. Now, I want you to see something. I want you to see how some of these fish actually have some red appearing in, in them. When you have red, that's telling you that it's something solid and something hard. And those are usually bigger fish when they get a little bit of red appearing in them as well. In fact, a lot, almost always a good bass will have a little bit of red echo in them also. Now notice the bottom of the lake. You see here it has red. That's telling me it's a very firm bottom. If I wasn't seeing the red, if it was just orange or only yellow, it would tell me that I'm over just a mud bottom or silt. Hard bottom is always important to find. Bass almost always prefer to be places where the bottom is very firm and very hard. I hope this is helping you learning to understand what you're seeing on your sonar units. Learn to trust them. They don't lie. When they draw you a picture, it's really down there. Have the confidence to use your sonar for what it's made and you again have a great competitive advantage over the average fisherman who just buys a graph because they know it's a neat tool but they really don't know how to use it. I hope this helps you. From MyBassCoach.com, I'm Alton Jones.